Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're going to fix your gear fear. I used to have this when I started too, but you can get over it and ultimately you'll be much more successful without it. Either way, I do stream on YouTube and Twitch, so come over to ask any questions when I'm live. All right, so what is gear fear precisely? I think there are two main issues that people tend to have. The first being always running budget kits despite having millions of rubles and access to better gear. And the second is hoarding valuable items in their stash forever, only to have them deleted at the end of the wipe. The psychology of budget running usually stems from our ruble count, i.e. number go up, feel good number go down feel bad, which is not necessarily a problem in and of itself because it's one of the fun parts of the game, having your money go up and feeling good about it, but when it hampers your willingness to progress it can become crippling. Budget runs are a great way to maximise rubles, but once you have enough to be comfortable there are other more important currencies so to speak in Tarkov other than money to focus on. EMC experience for example is much harder to grind for than cash and dictates what we can access from the traders in a kind of virtuous circle. Gaining experience heavily favours surviving raids and utilising better armour, guns and bullets will help with this, allowing you to complete quests and progress faster to unlock even more equipment that will in turn help you to survive more. Even if these higher tier gear sets are not as economically profitable, especially at first due to the increased losses on death, if they increase your survival rate as long as you're still able to keep making some money or at least have your ruble count stay stationary, you're effectively trading the extra cash for experience. This is much more valuable and we do this all the time, handing in items for the daily quests. Also, dying less means that you'll be able to spend more time in raid and less time gearing up. Now, I'm not saying that you need to wear all of your best gear right away, there's a balance to be had. The aim of beating gear fear is to use decent kits in a sustainable way. There are a few strategies that you can use to help encourage stepping up sensibly to achievable loadouts, but the first critical part is learning how to make money. This can be stashes on shoreline, village runs on woods, scaving into streets of Tarkov or reserve. You'll have to try a few methods, but whatever ends up working for you, just the knowledge that you can get any money back if necessary is really the first step. Once you know how to get some money, my personal favourite tactic is then setting a level. Say I have 5 million rubles and I'm still using super budget kits. What you do here is say, okay, when I get to 6 million, I'll step up my loadout by going one tier of armor higher than normal or modding my weapons slightly more or buying better ammo. Then if you do run down to under 5 mil, you farm back up again to 6 using your old budget ways and try again. Often you never end up going back down to 5 anyway and remain profitable, so you can just start using better stuff forevermore. But there's a buffer here just in case you get unlucky or it doesn't work out for some reason. Another way that can work is to make multiple multiple copies of the same kit, because once you put say four loadouts together, this minimizes the mental cost of dying and having to re-gear up each time, making it that much easier to queue back in to give it another try. The reason that this isn't my most favorite is the inefficiency when it comes to storage space. It can be really hard for standard account players, especially to fit four loadouts into their stash without compromising other stuff. But if you choose loadouts that nest down reasonably well, then it's possible. Armored rigs are really good for this because they take up far less room between the armor and the rig because it's combined and they let you store weapons like the MP7 inside that flatten down really easily. Alternatively, you could just mod a few weapons identically and get all the ammo together and leave it at that, as deciding on this is usually what takes the longest. On that note, don't try to overstretch into gear that makes you really uncomfortable straight away. The idea here is to upgrade a few pieces at a time to gradually build comfort with the slightly more expensive gear to experience how fights feel with it and also getting used to the inevitable deaths and the emotions that come with it. There is nothing wrong with still running some easy budget load outs now and then, but as you move up the tiers of equipment slowly, eventually nothing will feel too out of reach and you'll be empowered to pick really anything that you want to, depending on the raid that you're looking to run. So the other part is leaving high value items in your stash forever. This happens especially with highly modded weapons from that lucky kill on a Chad PMC or armour like a slick that you found in a stash. These have a tendency to remain in a box as a sort of weird trophy gathering dust. What we need to decide is to sell, use it right now, or to keep these things for a specific purpose. It's not always necessary to use them immediately or to sell them, but you should have a game plan as to when it's going to come out, because otherwise the next time that it'll see the light of day is most likely at the end of the wipe, when everyone else is also using their meta stuff too, because nothing matters anymore. And that's if it doesn't just get deleted before you get the chance. I try to pick difficult PvP quests for these and wheel them out then, for example, long line on interchange or dorms kills for Jaeger. If you're not going to use an item 
item fairly soon and it's freely purchasable, whether that be from the flea market or from the traders, then you are normally better off getting rid of it. Even for me, so often I pick up a weapon and have the intention to use it, but I just never get round to it and it sits dormant in my stash for ages before I even realise that it's still there. The one real exception is those items that are not freely purchasable, like the Alton helmet. As you simply can't buy these items at any level, there's a little bit more leeway on keeping them, but you should still have an idea in your mind as to when you'll go to use it. For example, combining with Zabralo on Factory for a super geared run. Replaceable items that are just sitting around in your stash are sucking up room that could be used for more useful things, or just simply making it hard to use your inventory properly because it's so full, which takes time that could be spent actually playing the game. Sometimes I even need to take my own advice as well, and I recently went through my cases to clear out attachments from the early game that I'm now unlikely to use at this stage in the wipe. Overall, the main thing that we have to remember is that all of this stuff is going to get deleted on the wipe eventually. Even more important than your PMC experience is your own experience as an individual player. This is the only thing that you will keep when we move from one wipe to the next, which will allow you to be more successful in the future. And amassing rubles is often the least effective way to build up this personal experience, as the most effective tactics generally avoid combat and don't teach you much except for some map knowledge and loot locations. Leveling up your loadout so that you can compete in areas that you're not as comfortable in, or being able to die less frequently in hotspot locations will progressively add to this experience of yourself over time, which ultimately is the most valuable resource in Tarkov of all. As usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.